this video presents the new features of Archiframe 2021. The most important update is an improved cross-laminated timber or CLT tool with improved control over board edges and joints between boards. Other updates include the ability to model insulation in 3D and control the shape of insulation boards, the ability to edit drill holes in elevation drawings, the option to add drill holes on wall frames for lifting elements, new features in elevation drawings and quantity takeoffs, including improved display of dimensions for planks with diagonal ends, the option to create elevation drawings for individual planks in an element, the ability to calculate the amount of work required to produce your elements. Note that for these features to be available, you must load the newest version of the Archiframe library in the library manager. I will demonstrate how the new CLT tool works by creating two walls that are missing from the demo house. However, instead of adding wall framing, I will create a new wall type with CLT boards as the core. In the custom element dialog, I will duplicate my demo exterior wall types and call the new type demo ext CLT. I will replace the framing layer with new boarding layer. This makes it possible to open the CLT settings where I can define the number and thickness of layers in the CLT panels. I want my panel to be 173 millimeters thick, so I will add five 25 millimeter thick layers and one that is 23 millimeters thick. I will also adjust the materials of the CLT boards. Then I will exit the CLT window and continue to define my layer settings as I would for any other kind of board, for example, defining the wall layer's Archicad layer, thickness and board size. Before finishing the overall wall definition, I need to check that the board elevation display settings are correct. To make the CLT panels visible in the interior, top and exterior elevations, I need to add the word core beside each of these fields in the settings. I will now place two elements in the floor plan and adjust the corner. Then I will also drag the CLT layer of the left hand side element so that the elements overlap by 40 millimeters. And finally, I will create planks. Here is the result in 3D. And here is a screenshot of the elevation drawings of these elements. With Archiframe 2021, you can also control the CLT panel's edges and connections. In the Edge dialog, you can set different styles for different edges of your CLT boards. I want to create a lap, so I will set the offset from surface value to zero and the depth of the lap to 173, so that it fits my neighboring wall. With a positive offset value, the edge would get a groove instead, as the groove would move towards the center of the board. Now let's check the result. The lap joint looks quite good except for the top, where there's a large gap between the two CLT panels. To fix this, I will return to the edge settings dialog and set the extra length end value to minus 30 in order to make the lap smaller. I will also add a screw line to the edge. Now the joint looks good. Then let's have a look at connections between two parallel boards. Here, you can choose between a lap joint, a tenon and mortise joint, and a joint in which both panels are cut to accommodate a third object. In this case, I will just add a tenon and mortise joint between the panels. Now let's have a look at Archiframe's new insulation objects. You can add 3D insulation to an element in my custom elements dialog by adjusting the framing layer settings. In this case, I want to avoid changing my existing elements, so I will duplicate the old framing layer and save it with a new name, Wall 173 Insulation. The settings now contain an option to create insulation, which must be set to 1, and the ability to choose the layer and thickness of the insulation. I will add the insulation on its own layer and set its thickness to 123 millimeters. 
Since my insulation is thinner than the wall framing, I might also want to define a Z offset, which shifts the insulation towards the exterior of the wall. I will add a Z offset of 50 millimeters. It is also possible to add other offsets from the left, right, top and bottom edges of the wall element. Finally, I will select the option to explode the insulation. This means that each piece of insulation will be a separate object that can be edited. Now the framing and insulation layer is complete, so I will return to the main element settings. Note that in the general settings, I again need to change the projection display settings so that the insulation boards are shown in the elevation drawings. I will just add core in each setting. Now I will use this definition to create a wall element and create planks. As you can see, insulation is now shown in 3D. My existing walls with the same element type were not affected by the change unless I create their planks again. Since I chose to explode the insulation, each piece is a separate object with its own control points. Before you can change the shape of the insulation board by dragging the control points, you must turn off automatic updates for the insulation. This can be done in the element object settings by setting the field update insulation automatically to zero. Now I can edit the insulation. Note that if I recreate planks, the insulation will return to its original form, but will still be editable. Next, I will demo how in Archiframe 2021, the drill tool is now easier to use through element elevation drawings. It is now possible to select targets from the element drawing and to then move the resulting hole across different boards. This only works as several boards are selected. The list of drill holes will be updated in real time so that when the hole is no longer located on a board, it also disappears from the list. The other drill related improvement is in the ability to add holes to elements so that they can be lifted with a crane. To do so, first select the top plate and two or more studs. Then in the plank dialog under special operations, select element lifting drillings wall top. Here you can set the distance of the holes from your selected stud centers. The results are visible in the elevation drawing and in 3D. As you can see, two holes were created around each stud that was selected. Finally, let's move on to the three improvements in Archiframe's elevation drawings and lists. First of all, I will demonstrate the improved display of dimensions for planks that have diagonal ends, like this roof rafter. I will create a dimension drawing for its plank using the all parts a single frame style. As you can see, this drawing now shows detailed dimensions for the plank end despite its diagonal cut. Previously, the user had to add these dimensions manually. The second update is that it's now possible to create drawings of individual planks in an element, for example, this wall element at the end of the house. I will navigate to the elevation drawing and select a piece for the framing. Now I can use the same plank dimension drawing tool as before to create drawings for individual planks. As you can see, the new dimensions are visible here too. Note that the presets for these drawings are located in the Archiframe blocks XML file and can be edited. To edit them, please follow the instructions written in green text. However, do not hesitate to reach out to us if you require further assistance. Finally, I will show you Archiframe's new quantity takeoff setting, which estimates the amount of time required to construct your elements. I will first select some of my element elevations and then open the quantity takeoffs tab. On the left, I will select the amount of work option and then create the quantity takeoff. IQFrame displays a warning that some of the wind boards have an unknown type and have been added to the calculation as gypsum boards. I will show you how to fix this problem in a second after taking a look at the amount of work calculation output. So now the quantity takeoff will open up in Excel. On the first sheet, we have a summary showing for each element, 
the size and amount of time required for construction. There's also a definition tab where you can define how different element types should be classified in the calculation. Finally, there are also more detailed tabs for each element. These show all the different components in the element and how long it will take to build them. As you can see, it mistakenly says that the element contains zero square meters of wind boards. This is because the wind boards were classified incorrectly when the quantity takeoff was created. I will fix this problem by fixing the classification in my user specific settings folder. First, I will open the main data folder and copy the frame listing element work eng Excel file from there to my user specific settings folder. Then, I will edit this copy by adding comma GU 13 times 1200 times 2700 in cell F12. This means that my element type is now classified as a windboard and will be included in all calculations involving windboards. I will now update the setting in ArchiFrame by opening and closing the settings dialog. If I now recreate my quantity takeoff, ArchiFrame will no longer give a warning about unknown element types. In the Excel file that opens up, windboards will also be listed in the file.